access to those as well. So you could basically build your own uh, reflection uh, functionality inside of Python. So uh, if you wanted to like create a small tool that goes out to the web and hits the Silverlight app, takes the zap file down, uh, unzips it, goes through the manifest and looks for all the DLLs and then imports them, uh, you could do something cool like that. Um, it's, it's extremely simple. You just say import common language runtime and then add the reference to the DLL and then do a standard Python import statement for those functions. And then just start calling the functions. Pretty easy. So as you guys probably run into testing applications, um, probably have run across a binary protocol here or there. Um, you know, just because it's over the web doesn't mean it's all HTML. Um, we did use binary before web. Um, so, you know, when, when you get this uh, binary protocol, um, it's really easy to, to want to give up. Um, and, and, you know, what do you, what do, you do without your scanner? Um, your scanner is not going to be able to test this now. And, you know, we could all apply uh, the, uh, the Miller fuzz to this, um, which will find probably vulnerabilities in, in, uh, in the parser of the, um, of the binary protocol, but we might not explore or not be able to have the chance to explore uh, deeper code paths um, as we would if we were able to actually uh, decode that, uh, that binary protocol into an actual uh, message structure that we can, can work with. So Python has a struct module which allows us to um, pack uh, Python values into uh, associated uh, C structures. So this is just a simple binary protocol I just whipped up as an example. Uh, a couple things to note. Um, it's like real common amongst binary protocols is you have like type markers uh, that indicate the type that follows. Um, strings would just have a uh, following the type marker, the length of the string, and then the string itself. Um, so uh, strings um, encoded in UTF-8. Uh, numbers would be encoded as doubles, uh, say a network byte order here. Um, and our type markers are basically uh, shorts or unsigned 16-byte integers. Um, so when it comes to parsing a string, basically, um, you know, when we indicate that our current position in a stream is that type marker, we could just unpack the next value into, into a short um, to get the length of the string. And then we unpack uh, the string based on the length, so we actually have that value uh, of the string there. Uh, writing a string, um, so going into, re going into reverse and actually sending stuff to the server now. Um, basically, it's just the opposite. You know, we, get, we encode our string into UTF-8, get the length of a string, write our type marker, and then write our string uh, with the uh, length of the string preceded uh, before the string, and that's it. So when we actually create all these methods for parsing Booleans, numbers, um, strings and other uh, maybe more complex complex objects that your binary protocol actually implements. Um, basically, this is this is what it's going to end up looking like. Uh, you know, we iterate over every byte in a stream. Um, you know, based on the type of uh, based on a type marker that we run into, then we do the associated uh, protocol parsing. Uh, and what we actually did now just is create some simple state machine. Um, and uh, there you go. So writing a hey, protocol parser is uh, a lot easier. That was like than, perfect uh, timing. Did. There you go. <laughs> so, um, um, so a couple of other things you, you might have noticed. Um, pretty much everything we were talking about here will work in either Python 2x or 3. The, uh, the URL uh, lib modules have been merged. Um, so, and if and if this just uh, isn't enough for you, uh, we've we haven't really came out and formally said this yet. But we're actually we're actually writing a book on this topic because this is a humongous topic and it's hard to do in, in like an hour, right? So we uh, we're writing a book on this and we're going to go because there's farther things you could go down, like um, using the base HTTP server class to then you know test browsers and do all that good stuff. So uh, if you just can't get enough, um, well, hopefully in like 
five years, the book will be out and it'll be already <laughs> de invalid. <laughs> So um, we have 10 minutes, um, which is a lot more than we actually allotted for. So <laughs> if you guys have uh, any questions, um, I just learned Python as we were talking about this. So um, I don't know how much help I could be, but be happy to answer any questions you got. Flip, flip the next one. So if you um, care about, what did you do? Man, you broke it. How did you do that? Is, I don't know. Some weird feature. OK, so if you. Um, if you care to listen to us run our mouth on Twitter or whatever, that's our, uh, our info. And uh, we'll be walking around. And if you have, it, does anybody have any questions right now? Oh, yeah, yeah. It's so, so the question was, can we provide the URL? The URL, yeah. Um, yes, we can. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for clarifying. It's, it's hexsec.com, H-E-X-S-E-C.com forward slash docs. And it's the, obviously the two top docs on there. Um, so that's the presentation you just saw. And then the code snippets that contains the, uh, the Burp API, the, uh, the Reflect Request Program, Dharma Encoder, and the uh, PyWebFuzz. And Dharma Encoder and PyWebFuzz are on Google Code, which is great because you get to submit bugs. And then I get to not fix them. It's awesome. Any other, any other questions? Yeah, yeah, the, the, the presentation yeah, is, it's up, it's up there. is the first link yep. on that page. So it's, it's not too verbose like with what it is. We literally did that like um, you know right before coming down here. So I'm just like, yeah, say Black Hat USA 2000. It's, it's quick. Any other questions? Wow, is that, it was that explanatory, huh? Awesome. Awesome. Well, anyway, thanks for showing up and watching our PHP talk. <laughs>